Welcome everyone, I'm Paul Fabre, a PhD student at the Theory and Simulation Group at ICN2. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the, the framework that it's built around Siesta for post-processing all the results that you get. So this is not a specific tutorial on any specific tool, but it's more of an overview of all the tools that are available to you. This talk will be most useful to you if you're at this point in your discovery of Siesta. So basically after some up and downs, you have gotten to the point where your simulation is running and you're quite happy with that. But after your simulation ends, you don't really know what to do with, with the files that you're getting. So maybe you can look at them, but you don't know what are the tools that you have to, to process them. And really there's a lot of things that you can analyze in Siesta. And this list, I try to give a summary of it, but it really depends on, on what is your system and what are the things that you are studying. So for example, you can analyze bands, fat bands, density of states, both projected, local and total, and wave functions, electronic density, potential profiles, partial charges, but really wh whatever you want, you can analyze it. Now the question is, how do you do it? So there are two main ways currently to do things in Siesta. One is the Fortran utils, which are packaged with Siesta. They are inside the util folder. They have been there ever since the Siesta beginning. So they, they have grown a lot and there are a lot of useful things. So you can see a list of them here. So you can see there are things for processing bands, grids, and molecular dynamics, optical analysis, wave functions, STM, and so lots of stuff. And they are Fortran utils, so you need to compile them, but, and there's a build all script that you can execute after compiling Siesta, and it will compile all of them for you. And, and of, of a special mention, is the contrib folder, which contains scripts that are not officially supported by the Siesta developers, but can be very useful to do your analysis. And in that regard, Andrei Postnikov will present uh, its tools, which are in the contrib folder in one of the videos for the school. On the other hand, as high-level languages have been growing since Siesta started, there are now tools to, to post-process things in Python, which is a very nice language for that. So in the main package in that regard is Sizzle, which you can install with pip install Sizzle, or if you're using conda, conda install Sizzle. And one important thing to note is that in general, you will be able to reach the same point um, from different perspectives. So more often than not, there will be more than one way to get your analysis. Now that you know what are the tools, the next natural thing to ask is, okay, how do I use them? So I obviously don't have the time to go through all the tools in 15 minutes for this video. So instead of telling you how to use each tool, I have decided that it's better to, to let you know how to find out about it for yourself. On the Fortran Util side, you will basically find a readme file or a text file in each Util folder. The readme file, you can read it in the terminal and the text file, you can compile it with PDF Latex and it will give you a PDF for you to read. And also there's a set of very well self-explained tutorials designed by Javier Junquera and you can find the link here. So you can follow the link if you want to find out more about it. On the Sizzle side, you can find the documentation here in this link and there are some tutorials in it but also you can find some extra tutorials in this GitHub repository. One thing I can tell you for sure from my experience in post-processing with Siesta is that it's always better to plan in advance. Since the output files can get really, really big in Siesta, Siesta will not output all the information that it can output. And you need to ask for the relevant things that you will need for your analysis. So it's always better to know what you need. These in the right are probably the, the most used flags for getting files that you need for, for processing. But in general, you should read the user guide and read each tool's documentation to understand what you will need and then be able to, to use the appropriate input flags on your input. Lastly, before we go to some examples, I would like you to understand that Sista can output two, dif two very different types of files. The unformatted files 
are written in binary, so you can not definitely not read them. And some examples of these are the Hamiltonian, the density matrix, real space grids, wave function files, and in general, files that are very big and you need to be very efficient in storing them. On the other hand, outputs that are not as big do not need as much efficiency, so they are formatted, which means that you can read them with your eyes. Uh, so you can directly check out the files and see the results. But anyway, it's usually still better to use programming for the post-processing. Some examples of these are the main output, uh, the structures files, forces, density of states, and the bands. On the unformatted side of things, I would like to do a special mention on real space grids. It's a very general and recurrent concept in Siesta, so you really need to understand what they are. So basically, if you want to represent the information of a certain quantity inside the unit cell, you cannot represent it continuously because that would need infinite memory. So instead, what you do is that you create an evenly spaced 3D mesh and you compute the quantity on each point of the mesh. And these are this is what real space grids contain. And some examples of this are the electronic density, which you can get with the safe row input flag, or the total potential one, which you can get with the safe total potential. Other types of potentials do also make sense in real space grids, but in general, any quantity that makes sense in real space can be stored in a, in a grid. You may find grids in two different formats in the Siesta output. Basically, before NetCDF storage was supported in Siesta, grids were stored like this. So the extension was the name of the quantity that was stored in the grid. After NetCDF support was implemented, um, grids look like this. They, con they have the extension .grid.nc and the prefix is the name of the quantity that is stored in the grid. Once you have a grid, there is a specialized software such as Vesta or XCRISDEN that can help you visualize them. The only problem is that they do not understand the Siesta format, so you need to convert it to some format that they understand, for example, Cube or XSF. So what you can do to visualize them is to use the grid to cube converter in the Fortran utils directory or the sgrid command if you have sizzle to convert your grid to a cube format and then visualize it with Vesta. On the other hand, what you can do now is to visualize them directly with sizzle. And this is quite nice because since you are already in Python and sizzle has lots of functionality for processing grids, and the analysis is much faster, or can be much faster, if you know how to use it. And now let's get to the examples. So first of all, I'd like to show you an example of how different paths can lead you to exactly the same thing. So for the charge density, there are at least three ways to get it. Uh, the first and most straightforward is to use the safe row flag in the input file to tell Siesta to directly store the charge density in a grid. You can also say write denture true and then Siesta will output the necessary things for denture to compute the charge density. This is useful also if you want denture to compute the wave functions as well, for example. And then you can also set ds.hs.save to true which basically will store the Hamiltonian with the overlaps and CISL using that and the density matrix can also compute the charge density in the grid. Finally, I'd like to give you a practical example on how this post-processing is done. So we have a terminal here on the left and a Jupyter notebook on the right. And I'm inside a folder where I already run a calculation on strontium titanite. And I have all these files that you see here. And the top pane of the terminal, we will use it just to look at the input file and see the flags that we are using. And the bottom pane of the terminal, we will use it for, for computing the analysis with the Fortran utils. And the Jupyter notebook, we will use it to process things with Sizzle. So let's start with the bands. In the input file, the most important thing is to 
to use the van lines block, which will tell Sista the path along which you want the vans to be computed. Then Sista will generate this file, the dot vans file. On the Fortran util side of things, you need to use GNU vans. Since I already compiled it, I have it here. Then I have to pass the van the vans file to Nuvans. And then Nuvans will return a thing that it's understandable by Nuplot to plot it. But we don't want it here, we want to store this in a file, let's say vans.data. And then we can use Nuplot to plot this thing. So plot vans.data with lines and you get the vans. The same thing can be done with sizzl. So <coughs> with sizzl what you do is basically to read the file which was called srtu vans and then you just ask for the plot. And you get exactly the same thing. So, yeah. For the projected density of states, the input file needs two things. Basically, this projected density of states block, which tells the, the energy range from minus 70 to 5 electron volts, and then some some other parameters about smearing and the number of points and also you can specify to Siesta a uh, um, k-point grid different than the one used for all the calculations to compute the projected density of states usually this grid should be finer than the than the normal one so what this does is to return this pdos file and the pdos.xml um, there's a Fortran util to, to read this pdos.xml file which is called pdos.xml and by default it will return the pdos for oxygen but if you need another contribution you need to go to the Fortran file change it and recompile it's not difficult but you need to recompile so what you need to do is to pass the pdos file that Sista outputted. Mm, I think it should be passed like this. Okay, so the same as the Nubans, it returns a thing that new plot can understand. So we store it under pdos.data say and then we open new plot and we ask to plot pdos.data with lines as well for example and you get the pdos for the oxygens as I, as I said and for sizzle you do it basically exactly that, like the ones you just read the file the pdos and then ask for the plot. By default, it gives you the, the total density of states, but there are very easy ways to get what you want. For example, with the split dose method, you get the density of states splitted um, by default on species, but you can also split on all orbitals, for example. And there is really lots of different things that you can ask for. And finally, I'd like to show you that since we ask for the Hamiltonian here, um, we can read the, the FDF file in CISO, for example. Okay, and now we can ask for the Hamiltonian. And basically from the Hamiltonian, you can calculate lots of things. So if, if you didn't calculate it with the siesta run, if you have the Hamiltonian, you can calculate most of the things that you usually need. So, and this allows you to, for example, plot wave functions in Sizzle. Plot wave 
function, let's say um, axis zero one. And then I, we have the wave function. The first one that I can ask for the fourth one, for example. And yes, this is mostly everything that I wanted you to know. Hope this overview was useful for you. And if you have any doubt about which tool to use for any specific analysis, you can leave a comment in the comment section since this video will be uploaded to YouTube and I will be very glad to answer it. Thanks.